Hello, my name is Heidi. I am an occupational therapist with Ascend Therapy Services, and my mission is to help aging adults and their families maximize independence and safety so that individuals can continue to do what they love rather than focus so much time and energy on the daily tasks they need to do, but that they can get through what they need to do so they can enjoy what they love to do. So one piece of that is using adaptive equipment or medical equipment, durable equipment, whatever it's called, um, different helpful tools that help someone to be safe as they do their daily tasks. So we'll go through some of those today. And with a lot of these tools, there's different styles, there's different brands, there's different sizes, different setups, and, and it's not a one size fits all type of deal. So I'm going to give some clues to kind of recognize what the differences are so that you can better be informed about what might be right for you. So we will just go ahead and get started here. So first we're going to talk about shower chairs. There may come a time when you don't feel safe and steady standing in the shower for the whole portion of the shower, or maybe you had surgery or were sick and temporarily feel like you should be sitting down in the shower to keep yourself safe so that you can bend and reach and do everything you need to do. Shower chairs are one of those things I definitely say are not one size fits all because they have different purposes and, and different sizes and stability and whatnot. So um, this one here on the top left of the screen has a nice, and, and we'll say this one right here, both of those two types of shower chairs, the legs pop on individually and they adjust by twisting or clicking. I think both of these you twist to adjust the height of the leg. So I'm going to share a little secret. And my favorite part about these two chairs is that they they can fit in unique situations. So let's say you live somewhere and your shower has one of those like built-in shower seats to it, but the built-in shower seat is just like a little corner piece. Um, it's too low, it's too slippery, it's too small to actually be a good seat. It's not a good fit to sit on. But then because of that built-in seat, if you put a shower chair in front of it, you don't have enough space in front of you to, to stand or put your legs because of the size of the shower. So we need to be careful about this and I wouldn't just like go do it by yourself. But one thing we can do is put three of the legs on and keep one of those back legs off and set it to the right height where it sits on that built-in chair. So it's like that built-in seat is your fourth leg and you can adjust each leg individually to make it sturdy, to make it straight. Um, and then you have a wider seat, a taller seat, a more sturdy seat, but you still have the space in front of you. So um, that's just a, a little trick if you're in one of those unique situations, but it's a situation that if you are in is important to figure out. So um, little, little known fact there, these other chairs, the, the legs are more sturdy, but they're just a different style. So you can see the top two chairs both have handles that you can push up from. The bottom right one doesn't. It has little handles, but they're lower down. They're not up high. Three of them have a back. One of them doesn't. So that just kind of depends on your sitting tolerance and balance and stability. Do you feel like you need to be able to lean back and rest while you're in the shower? Or are you okay sitting upright just on that stool type? But it's it's not the, the narrow round stool. Um, I'm not a big fan of those. This one is a little wider and sturdier than those types of stools. This one here is a tub bench. So how this works is you would put two of the feet, if you have not a walk-in shower, but like a tub shower, you can put two of the feet in the tub and then it goes over the edge. So let's say the edge of your tub is right here. And these two feet go on the outside of the tub. That way, if you can't step all the way over that high tub, you can sit on the edge of the seat and then lift your feet in and slide over into the shower. So um, that's that's great for use when you have a tub shower. And there's things you can do to you know cut your shower curtain and make it fit better so water doesn't spray out and whatnot since two feet are in, two feet are out. So these are just some demonstrations of different styles. Some, some might be just the way you like it. You know, the top two chairs are very similar in the fact that they both have handles, they both have backs, 
but they they look a little different and their legs are are different in the way they adjust both of them adjust but these ones kind of click up and down whereas these ones twist so you can get a more concise height to it so those are just some examples there in the shower theme here are some well two of them are long handled sponges and one is just a soap pouch so if you have a hard time reaching your back a hard time holding on to a bar of soap a hard time doing different things these are some tools you can use so this one is just a long handle there's a sponge on one side a loofah on the other side you can use that to reach your feet to reach your legs whether you're standing or sitting if it's hard to reach where you need to get it that's a good option you can also reach with that one to your back but if reaching up is difficult for your shoulder you can use one like this which is curved and bent and you can see how in the picture here you can keep your shoulder down and it can it can still reach your back and go around and scrub and get what you need to get there these soap pouches i actually use i think that they're really great um, if you like to use a bar of soap rather than the liquid soap you can but but it's slippery or they slip out or it falls down and then you need to pick it up you can set it in the soap pouch so it's just a little pouch you slip the bar of soap in you tighten it up and then as you scrub the suds come through the side so not only does it give you a better grip a better grasp it also gives you some texture um, as you're scrubbing yourself to kind of help get clean while helping hold on to that bar of soap it also can help for people with um, vision difficulties a lot of things in the shower are white and not all but a lot of bars of soap are white <laughs> so sometimes it's hard to see okay where is that bar of soap where is what i'm doing compared to where i'm going rather than just the slippery aspect the vision aspect these pouches give these bright colors so that you know where your soap is you can grab it get it in the water scrub it and and do what you need to do there so those are some options to help with the bathing process here are some toilet seat risers there are more there are so many different styles of toilet seat risers and these are just a few that I want to talk about so one that is not pictured here is one that just kind of you flip your seat up and it sits in the bowl of your toilet you do want to make sure that when you're purchasing one of these you pay attention to whether you have a round toilet or an an elongated toilet because you definitely want the toilet seat riser to fit your toilet bowl um, i've seen people with elongated toilets use round toilet seat risers and then it's sliding around and it's not in there in place and then that's not very safe <laughs> so we want to pay attention to that as you're looking whether you're in store or online or wherever you get these products um, there are ones like i said that just sit in there and and they're okay if they're the right size for your toilet, but they also are hard to, to be super sturdy, you know, depending on how you get up or move, it might slide around a little bit. So that's why I like these styles that I show here in the screen. On the top left, you can see this one, and you actually unscrew your toilet seat, lift it up, put the riser in between and put your toilet seat back down. So you're sitting on your actual toilet seat not just the riser, but the riser goes underneath it. And then back where you screw in your toilet seat, you have these long bolts that go in and screw in the riser also. So everything is tight and held down and secure, which is definitely a plus. Um, this one also has handles, which is nice for if you need a little help standing up from the toilet, even though you have a raised seat, it can help to push those up. One thing I, would not recommend is getting a toilet seat riser with handles that does not screw into the back of the seat if it's one that just sits there you don't really want the handles because then if you push on one side stronger than the other the toilet seat will kind of flip out because there's nothing holding it down so if you want one with handles i definitely recommend getting one that screws into the back of the toilet this one on the bottom here also screws into the back of the toilet you can see the little holes here and it would do the same thing. You can set your toilet seat on top of it, I'm pretty sure, um, but it, it has a hinge. So this one is secure to the toilet and it stays there where it is. You can lift this seat up and down, but the riser stays in place. This riser, the back piece that's screwed in would stay in place. 
and then the seat actually hinges and flips up. So if you are someone who needs the riser to sit, but when if you're standing, um, you want to flip it up so it's out of the way, that's an option. Or if you want to be able to flip it up for better cleaning under it, that's why a lot of people choose this hinged option so that they can clean the, the toilet a little bit easier um, without worrying about things getting stuck if you can't lift it up. So then that leads us to this one on the top right, which just kind of sits over the toilet. Um, and, and again, you still need the right size bowl because it fits in there, but then it has these handles that go all the way down to the floor. So that's different than what I said to have one that sits on top of the toilet with handles because these handles go down to the floor. So as you push down, you're actually pushing into the ground, not just into the side of the seat. So it will not tip over. This one is quite large. It's a little bit bulky. It, it's pretty wide because it goes over the toilet and has the handles on the side, but it's a great temporary option. My parents had this toilet seat riser when they had their knee and their hip replacements. And it was great because it was easy to, to set up on top of their toilet, had nice sturdy handles. They could use it for the couple weeks, couple of months that they needed it after surgery. And then they were able to take it off easily. With these, you can also unscrew them and take it off if you don't need them anymore. But this one is just easier to kind of take on and off more quickly. It's also a really great option if you have, um, a loved one who comes to visit who might need a toilet seat riser and you don't have one on your toilet all the time. So after my parents used this after their surgery, anytime my grandma came over for parties and she needed to use the bathroom when she was ready to go, they could take the seat, easily set it on top of the toilet. She could do what she needed to do, but then when she was done, they were able to take it off so all the other guests could use the standard toilet the way it was typically used. So it's a really great option for a temporary, easily movable part-time riser with handles. There are also toilet safety frames. So let's say you have a, a different seat riser or you have a toilet that is, is higher already and you don't need a seat riser, but you still have a hard time getting up, not because it's too, too low, but you just need a little effort, a, a little assistance from your arms to help push yourself up. These are great options for that. And it's a really great option if you are somewhere where you can't place like a, a sturdy grab bar, or if you don't want to screw in a grab bar into your wall, let's say again, you're having surgery or it's a temporary thing. This is a good temporary and or long-term option for being able to, to push your arms down, to stand up, to get up off the toilet. So this one goes all the way to the floor, comes up, and it screws in underneath where your toilet seat screws in, the same way as those seat risers do. Um, so it's just kind of secure in there. You can generally adjust the width. There's two settings to be narrower or wider. And then this one, instead of going all the way to the floor, kind of sits on your toilet bowl underneath your toilet seat and comes up and over and screws in the back the same way. So they're the same idea, but instead of going all the way to the floor, it just curves in here. And so it's a little less of an obstacle um, reaching for the ground. Or, you know, if, if you use like a walker or something where you need to get around those, those pieces on the ground, it just frees up a little bit of space. But both of these are great options. I've used both of them with clients of mine. Um, it's really just personal preference here. One thing to note is that if you're, they're not like the the most secure, sturdiest thing ever in that they won't move at all. Um, they're not going to move or collapse on you if you push down. And that's that's their purpose is for you to push down on them while you stand up. If you kind of push out to the side, they'll wiggle and jiggle a little bit. I mean, they, they have a, a high weight capacity. They're not going to break on you. But some people have told me that they just feel like they're not very secure. But that's because they kind of wiggle and shake side to side, but they're not going to go anywhere if you're pushing straight down. So that's just something to keep in mind as you're looking into these. Great option to help you stand up from your toilet if you don't want or can't have a permanent grab bar in place in the wall um, and just push down to stand up. 
nice and secure. Here are some sock aids. So this helps you get your socks on. So there's different styles, different types. I typically use this one right here, which is a hard plastic. You shape, you slide your sock onto it and then use the handles to lower the sock aid and the sock down to your foot. You slide your foot in it, you pull the handles up to pull your sock on. Um, I, I just find this one the easiest to use for me, but this is also a good option. It's softer and more pliable. So sometimes people have a hard time getting their sock on this hard one because they have to really stretch their sock to get it over if they have tighter or smaller socks. And it's hard if they don't have the, the hand strength to pull it all the way down. So the softer one, you're able to kind of squeeze and make smaller to get the sock over. But I do find that this harder one just is kind of um, simpler in getting it up over your foot a little bit. It's again, personal preference. There's nothing wrong with using, whoops, sorry, either one. Um, but this this is, it, it's softer, it moves, but it's just different. The This one is a harder plastic, so the sock does slide on it. This has this material on the back, which makes it harder to slide up, but then it gets easier because you can curl it in smaller. So it's, it, like I said, personal preference. This over here is one that sits on the ground and it's a multi-piece thing. This, um, you would set your sock over this piece and just slide your foot into it and it kind of just sits there. Whereas these, you hold the handles with your hands and pull the sock up. Here, the sock would be on here and you would push your foot into it. This piece is kind of a different piece to it. You can also use it to push your socks off or as a shoehorn or different things as well. Um, so that's why it kind of has a multi-piece thing here, but this one sits on the floor. These ones you hold in your hand and pull it up. So pros, cons, benefits to each one. Like I said, none of these are bad. Um, it just depends on what your difficulties are. Is it because you you have a hard time bending down? Is it because you have a hard time, you know, gripping the sock to pull it up and really figuring out which one is, is best for you would depend on what your difficulties are. And um, if you're not sure, maybe reach out to an occupational therapist or someone who knows about these tools to see what might be best for you. These are different examples of reachers. Um, and reachers are really, really great to help with many different things. They can help get your pants up if you can't reach the ground. Um, they can help reach for items across, you know, farther from you, up high from you, down on the ground, picking up things from the floor and putting them on a table or putting them in your hand. These just show that there's different types and styles. So this one here is kind of, it used to be more standard. That's what I see more when I was working in clinics and whatnot. Um, but if I'm just going to the store, I see these more often these days. Um, and a lot of times this style can can rotate the, the claw. So this one here is kind of like an up and down claw, whereas the other one can be up and down or side to side because they can kind of twist. And you can see that there's two different sizes here. Um, this one just is, is up and down, but you squeeze the handle here, which makes the claw shut. There's also this little metal piece, which can be used for different things. So some people use that to kind of push your sock off the back of your heel over your foot to get your, your sock off. We have the sock aid to get it on, and then they can use the reacher and this little piece to get it off. There's also they're usually um, a magnet piece at the bottom. So if you needed to pick up small magnetic things, maybe you drop the back of an earring or something and you wanna pick it up, that helps with that. It has this little hook here, which can be used to like hook the reacher to a walker. So if you use a walker and you always wanna have a reacher nearby, this is a good option because it can kind of stick to that without being in your way and then you always have it. So here again, um, no right or wrong between these two, but the size of the reacher does kind of matter. Um, sometimes when they're really long reachers and you're trying to grab something and, and hand it to yourself, 
it's it's hard if the reach is too long so that's why they have different sizes and they can kind of be used for different things if if you're reaching for a box of cereal up above in the cabinet this is a better one because that claw will be horizontal to grab it better whereas this one would be difficult because you'd have to twist your hand to get to it um, something higher you'd want a longer reacher something closer to you you want those smaller ones so it just depends on what you're using it for now let's talk really quickly about walkers so a lot of times first of all many people are hesitant to want to transition to using a walker um, i've heard a lot of people say oh walkers are for old people they're not for me or i'm not an old man or i don't need it or whatnot um when we're using a walker to help increase our independence it it's not limiting us a lot of times people see it as a limiter like something that they need to rely on but really it's a tool to help you have the right posture or to help you have the right balance or to help you conserve your energy so you can walk further and do more so i really like to try to think about walkers as a tool to help increase independence rather than seen as something stuck in front of you to take away your independence. Um, there's so many different types and styles of walkers out there. These are just three basic common ones. And we'll talk about kind of why each one is good for a different reason. Walkers are one thing that people, they need it or their family members think that they need it and they go get it and they start using it, but they don't know exactly how to size it, how to, um, position themselves with it, they form bad habits, and then by the time they really, really need it, they have these bad habits that make it not as safe to use as if we learned the right way at the beginning. Um, I always kind of say I wish that walkers required like a like a driver's license, how you need to like take a class or, or do a test <laughs> before using it, um, because then you'd be trained properly right from the get-go and we don't have to worry about it later. But Absolutely this is just a standard front wheel walker um a lot of times people put tennis balls on the back or skis on the back to help it slide better um it's it's sturdy it's not going to roll away from you too quickly because there's only two wheels it can fold up pretty nicely it gets pretty small um it's it's the basic standard you just need you know balance support or stability support to get from here to there and you use that um one big thing for both of these not so much this one but we'll get to that the the proper way to find the right height for your walker is if you're standing up and you put your arms down by your sides and you're just like relaxing them straight down where your wrist level is is where the top handle of the walker should be and i see a lot of people adjust their walkers a lot higher and you know they they have them way too tall but they always say, oh, but if it's lower, I'll be hunched over. But what really happens is people tend to walk with their walkers out too far in front of them, and then that's when they end up hunched over. But if their walker was a little lower so that the handles are right at that wrist height, but you step close into the walker, your shoulders can be relaxed. They don't have to be hiked up or out to the sides and your elbows bent and you're kind of right there at the walker in a way that you can keep your weight on your feet. You're not leaning, putting your weight on your arms. Um, and it, it's at that good height for you. So that's another, that that's the most common thing about walkers that I see um, being used improperly is just having them too high or too far out in front of you. So you really want to step in close to your walker with this, you'd have your feet, you know, in the walker not way back here behind it so that's that's a standard that's a front wheel walker this we call a rollator it has the four wheels it definitely rolls faster um it has the seat it usually has a pouch and it has the brakes and the brakes are so 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 important um you always want to lock your brakes whenever you're not walking so let's say you're standing in line lock the brakes Let's say you want to reach for something on the floor or on the table way over there, you lock the brakes. Let's say you're transitioning from walking and you're about to sit down, you lock the brakes. Um, and I get on people about this and a lot of people think it's really silly, but 
at the beginning, maybe you don't need it because you're just walking and everything's fine, but eventually you might get to the point where you rely on the walker a little more for stability. And then you never know when you're gonna need to grab it. And if the brakes aren't locked, it's not mm. gonna hold you up. It's just gonna fly away. Um, if you're talking to a friend and you just stop in the hall and then something happens where you get moved or startled or someone bumps something, if it's locked, it's gonna be stable and you can hold on to it. If it's not locked, it's gonna roll away. And that's the thing with the four wheels is it does go quicker. So a lot of times if someone, let's say they're independent and they walk with no walker, but then they have a surgery, they'll start off with this front wheel walker because it's a little slower. Then they'll progress to the rollator. Then maybe they'll progress to a cane or to you know walking without again. Um, and maybe they stick with a walker just depending on the situation. So um, this is really great when you like to, to walk longer distances, but maybe you get really tired because it does have that seat on it. But one thing that's super important is when you're using a rollator and you wanna sit on the seat, one, you never, ever, ever, ever sit on it and have someone push you or sit on it and scoot yourself. It says right on the walker, don't do that, um, but a lot of people do. So um, if you want to sit down, I would always recommend if you're somewhere where there's a wall, like let's say you're walking down the hallway, um, push the walker up against the wall and then lock the brakes and then turn around and sit on it. Because then when you go to sit or you go to stand, it's not going to roll out from under you by you pushing down or back on it because the wall is there to hold it in place. Um, if you are outside and there's no wall and nothing to you know push it up against just make sure you lock those brakes but it's always best to push it up against something if you can when you're going to go sit on it if you keep things in your little pouch and you're going to lift up the seat and bend down to get the pouch lock your brakes just always lock the brakes <laughs> um, this is an upright walker or a stand-up walker and it is a little taller um, this one also has a seat and a pouch and the four wheels and the brakes. So everything I talked about here um, is important for this as well. But it has these taller handles and these troughs. And this is for your forearms to rest. And so you would have it rather than down by your wrist, you know, if you if you bend your elbows, again, you don't want your shoulders hiked up, um, but you would want to, to sit your forearms in those troughs. And this helps people sometimes just stand more upright if they have a hard time with the other walker standing close to it um it just gives a different position some people like the stability more it it all depends on on your situation and this is is really hard to tell which would be best for you without recommendation from a physical therapist or an occupational therapist um or someone who really knows what they're doing and can take a look at your situation so if you're if you're going walker shopping um I would take all those things into consideration and reach out for guidance if you can on really what would be the best style and type for you. Then um, this is these are just different examples of grip assist. If you have a hard time pinching things, grasping things, grabbing things, um, you can stick a fork, a pen, anything in this tube and it just makes it a wider handle. You can set something like this around a handle to help hold your hand to it. This can help grasp a jar and, and turn it. Same thing, this is like a silicone mat you can put on a jar and twist. These can help the keys. Um, if you have a hard time holding the small keys, it gives a bigger, a bigger grasp for it. So there's so many different things out there to help if you have hand weakness or difficulty with fine motor tasks. So today I'm gonna to be demonstrating some of my favorite pieces of adaptive equipment and helpful tools that really help to make those daily tasks easier so that we can continue on with our day um, the way that we want to. So I'm gonna go ahead and get straight into it and we're gonna be doing some dressing things and other things today and I'm just gonna kind of start from the bottom up. So I'm going to start with compression stockings. These are very tricky for a lot of people to get on themselves or to help other people get on. Um, they're, they're tight, they're stiff, they're long. It's a lot to manage and deal with and there's a lot of tools out there to help get compression stockings on yourself. And I'm gonna to demonstrate to you my favorite. This is a, it's a stocking donner. They're all kind of called that. Um, but this is my favorite one. And I know it's kind of hard to see. I'll, I'll show you real quick here. It's just all these crazy wire things. But my favorite part about this one are these handles that come up 
So not only are they extended, but they also can swivel. So I'll just show you how this works. It goes here and we can pop this handle up, giving a longer handle to hold on to. And then they also kind of swivel back and forth. So I'm gonna grab my stocking here. And I start by placing this stocking donner between my legs. You could also put it on a table or something in front of you, just to kind of hold it with this U shape, um, the rounded part facing towards you. And then we take the stocking and we just kind of hold it in front of that U shape piece with the heel towards me and the front of the stocking in the front. And then we take the stocking and we're gonna fold it over the top of that stocking donner. So once again, I'll bring it up here so you can see how we just kind of started here and we start to pull it over the top there. And then we just keep pulling it down. And this is often the trickiest part for people because these stockings are pretty tight and you really have to pull them down to get all the way on the stocking donner. And we're gonna just keep going until I can see or feel the toe of the stocking at the top of the hole here. So here's the hole where your, your foot goes in and we're gonna just keep pushing this down. So I just pass the heel and I'm gonna keep pulling and twisting and pushing this stocking onto these wires. And now here I can feel the toe. You can see it's kind of right at the top. If my hand goes in, it goes about halfway down and hits that toe. So then I take these handles and we're gonna lower it down. And my favorite part about this, again, with those swivel handles is I don't have to lift my foot all the way up here because sometimes it's really hard to, to lift your foot up when you're sitting. And so I can use these handles to kind of bend it at an angle to where I can then slide my foot into the stocking and kind of just push my foot in and pull my hand up. Sometimes it gets a little stuck and I just kind of go back and forth a little bit to ease it up. The other great thing about this is it has different levels of handle. So as I come up higher, instead of reaching all the way up here, I can reach down to the next handle and pull it up. Then I can reach down to the next handle and pull it up. And again, I'm just gonna kind of go up and down until I get the stocking to the point where I can reach it. Once I get to where I can reach it, I can push this little wire thing off the stocking, move that to the side, and then I can pull it the rest of the way up. And this is, I mean, it's its not super simple. It's not the easiest thing you've ever done. It takes a little getting used to, but so does everything. Um, mm -hmm. And it prevents us having to reach down to pull, to yank, and the, the toe is right on my toe, the heel is right on my heel, and the stocking is all the way up. So that is my, my favorite stocking donner. Like I said, a lot of them are these wire things not a lot of them have these handles, so that's definitely something to look for if you're looking for one that really works the best. So now that I have the compression stocking on, let's put on our socks. So I have here a handy dandy sock aid. It's kind of similar, but instead of putting the sock in and pulling it around like we did with the donner, I just slide the sock over this thing. Um, as if this was my foot. So I'll show you this a little closer up too. Again, it has a U shape. The, the open front is the top of the sock. The heel goes in the back of the sock. And this is just a little piece to grip the sock to help it hold on and slide up your foot a little better. So same thing, I'll sit here. I like to place it between my knees. It's just easiest for me to get started. And then once I take the sock and I just pull it on, once I get it on, I set it on my lap. And again, this can be kind of tricky depending on how tight your socks are, just getting them stretched over. But we wanna pull the sock up as high as we can on the sock aid, and you want the toe of the sock to be flat across the top. That's how you know you have it all the way on. And then we'll take this, and it has the nice long handles to bring it down to the floor. So I like to do it way out in front of me. If I'm too close, it's hard to, to really get the right angles. So I just kind of swing it out there. It's sitting on the floor and I can take my foot and just slide my foot forward. 
And as I start to pull the handles on the socket, I wanna point my toe down because we want it to slide up over our heel. And if our foot is up, it's gonna be harder to get over that heel. So I point my toe down and I pull the strings to come up. I can kind of reach down closer if I need to and keep pulling. And then your sock is on your foot. Toes where it should be, heels where it should be. Prevents the bending and reaching or if you have a hard time lifting your leg up to get your sock on. This is a great tool to help. So if I'm going in order, we did our stockings, we did our socks. Now I'm gonna show you um, a few ways to use a reacher, a grabber, a reach and grab it. I've heard it called many different things. Um, I call it a reacher and this is the one I have. So it has just a handle and then you squeeze the handle here and the clamp shuts and opens. So there are many, ways that you can use a reacher. One is if you have precautions and you're not supposed to be twisting or reaching or bending, you can use a reacher to grab something for you. So let's say I need to get that socket I just put over there, but I can't reach over for it. I can use this and keep my, my, my back straight while I bring this over to me. Let's say there's something on the floor and I need to pick it up, but I can't bend over. I can use this to pick it up. I was helping my kids clean their playroom last night and there's all these toys on the ground and I didn't want to get up and down and up and down for each one. So I used the reacher and we went around and picked up the items um, off the floor. So it's helpful for that. This one's pretty cool because the, the claw part can go two ways. So this is kind of an up and down claw and I can pull it and turn it and then it turns into a side to side claw. So when you can see it, then I have to turn it sideways for you to see that claw. So this is great, a, a side to side claw, if you need to get say a, a cup or a box of cereal because it's open and it can grasp on either side of the item for you to pick it up and grab it for yourself. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it back to the up and down claw for what I'm about to show you next, just because that's what I'm used to. And I think it's a little bit easier for what we're gonna do, which is putting on our pants. So let's say we need to get our pants on. We can't bend over and reach our feet. Or again, we can't lift our legs up and all of those things. So we're going to use the reacher to help us get our pants on. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just kind of spread out my pants so they're out in front of me. If they're bunched up, it's gonna be harder to, you know, get in the right spot. So I kind of try to just flatten them out. And then I'm going to, if, if you had, say a surgery or one leg is more difficult to move than the other, that's the leg you wanna start with first because you have more flexibility in the pants typically. Mm -hmm. And so what I would do is, let's say I'm gonna put the left leg on first. That's the one we've been working with. I'm going to, to take the reacher and pinch the front of the pants on that left side. That way, if I do it at the front, I can bring these pants down and I can hold it up a little bit. And by holding it up, it opens up that left side of the pant leg and I can start to slide it up. If, if it gets kind of stuck, I can move the reacher and grab a different part of the pants, but I basically want to be able to get it up until I can reach it. Once I can reach it, then I can use my hand to pull, and now my foot down below at my heel is kind of getting stuck. Again, with everything else, we want to point our toe down, and it might be helpful at this point to kind of grab, so I'm going to hold it here and grab the back of the pants and pull up the back of the pants because that will help it get up over the heel. And we just keep going and pulling. Now I can set the reacher down since I can reach. And I'm going to pull this all the way up over my foot. So now I have one leg on. But now we got to get the other leg on. And so I'm going to lower my pant leg down a little bit on this left side because, again, I don't want to reach my foot all the way up in here. So now I'm going to grab my pants on the right side of the pant leg and bring it down. And so my left leg kind of holds the left side of the pants open 
and the reacher is holding the right side of the pants open. So I'm gonna hold open that hole and then I can lift my foot and set it in here. And same thing, we want our, our it probably is easiest if we flatten out the leg and then grab the pants, point the toe down and pull it up. Then we can grab the back of the pants to pull it up over that heel. And we just kind of adjust until you can reach it with your hand. And then once again, we can set the reacher down and reach with our pants to continue to pull it up. Now that it's up to my waist, I can go ahead and stand up and just pull them up the rest of the way. And so that is a way to use a reacher to help with putting on your pants or shorts or underpants or whatever not that you need to get over your feet and up to your knees. And there are different types of reachers. Um, there are shorter ones, there are longer ones. This is a little longer than what I would typically use to, to get my pants up because by the time you pull your arms all the way up here, so sometimes shorter ones are better for different functions. Um, that's just something to look out for if one is kind of tricky for you. Maybe we'll look into a different type of reacher. So that is a reacher. Now we have, now that we got our stockings, our socks and our pants on, I can put on my shoes. And this is my very favorite piece of adaptive equipment. I'm gonna come up a little closer and show it to you. It's called a foot funnel. And it's just this little piece of plastic. And again, it kind of has this U shape and there's a, a piece for the front and the back, and it slides over the back of your shoe. So this is my shoe, and I'm gonna put this over the back, and then you can see, once it's on, that there's a piece of plastic inside the shoe and a piece going around the back of the shoe. It has the longer piece here, you wanna make sure that's on the outside of your shoe. And this is my, my very, very favorite thing, because it makes it so easy to put your shoes on. You can just slide your foot right in. Um, way easier for me compared to say a shoehorn or a long handled shoehorn because sometimes when we're trying to use a shoehorn, we need to get it in the right spot and kind of move our foot around. This is just here, it's on the shoe, it's held in place um, and it, it's gonna stay there and let me slide my foot in. So once I put this on, I hold onto the string because there's a little string attached to the back and that's what's going to help it pop off at the end. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of hold the tongue open a little bit to make sure that stays up and drop my shoe. And then I'm just going to slide my foot in. Make sure I get under my tongue and then just push your foot down and that foot funnel holds the back of the shoe up. So I can pull the foot funnel off once my foot is in there and my shoe is on. And sometimes the tongue might need a little adjusting um, and that's something you can kind of figure out with the way you lace it or the way you hold it because if you push your foot in, um, it might bunch it a little bit. And, and this next tool we'll talk about can kind of help bring that tongue up too. But I just think that the foot funnel is so, so helpful. Um, and you saw how easy my foot just slid into the shoe with that. And this works with really any type of shoe that has a back. It can be a thin back, it can be a flimsy back, it can be a stiffer back. I mean, it's probably not for boots. Um, it's not for sandals that don't have a back because then you don't need it. But any standard shoe, you can use this foot funnel, super helpful. Another option to help if you have a hard time getting your, you know, reaching down to get your shoe on or lifting your leg up to get your, your shoe on is having a specific style type or brand of shoe that's easy to slip on. I got these for Christmas, they're Kizix, and they are kind of built to have a stronger heel that pops back up. So you could also just get the shoe, and this one, same thing, you just slide your foot in, push your heel down, and it goes on super easy. So both of those are really great options if you have a hard time getting your shoes on and off. To, to take the foot funnel and put it on any shoes you have or to get a special shoe like the Kizix that, that can just slide right on. So super, super helpful for that. Now we'll take a look at a couple of different things. This is called a dressing stick. Once again, I'll bring it up so you can see what it looks like. It just has these two little 
pieces of metal covered in rubber or something. It's a long stick and then there's a little hook on the back. And so it can be used for a lot of different purposes. And I'm gonna show you two of them today and we'll talk about a few others. So one thing I've used this for is, let's say someone wants to get something out of their closet or get their hanger down, but they can't reach all the way up to where their hanging rod is. They can use this to kind of use this piece here to reach up and pick up their hanger and bring it down and then they have the shirt they need. Um, it could also be used to push off things like compression stockings. So I'll just show that real quick if we pull these pants back up and we had these compression stockings here, they're tight. And so they're hard to get on, but they're also hard to get off. It's hard to push them down where they need to go. So I like to use this little piece of the um, dressing stick and kind of hook it in the stocking and then just push it down. And since it's that rubber coated, it's not going to, um, you know, rip your leg or rip your socks or anything and you can push this off. If I take my shoe off, I can use it. If I'm gonna take my sock or stocking off all the way, I would wanna take this um, dressing stick and hook it in the back around the heel because that's often where things get stuck. And so I point my toe again and push it off the heel and you can see how it just kind of comes off. Compression stockings are tighter, a little more difficult, but same thing, we can just kind of keep pushing around the front. And then you want to end by pushing it off the heel in the back. And I discovered you can kind of even use your other foot to help by pushing that off. But you really want to point your toe and get over the heel to push this stocking off of your foot. Of course, mine's being extra tricky right now because I'm trying to demonstrate. But it works. You can push it off the back of your heel. We're going to continue on so we can see the other uses for it. So we can also use it to help get our shirts on. Or like I said, um, if you needed help getting like your tongue up, you can kind of use this hook to, to hook and grab it. If you have some elastic shoelaces or the shoelaces with like the little tabs that you pull to tighten and you can't reach down to pull them to tighten them up, you can use this little hook to reach down and pull that up to tighten it up there. So some other uses, some people use this little hook for a zipper. If they can't manage the zipper with their fingers, they can hold the stick and kind of zip their jacket up. I'm gonna show you today how I use it to get an open front shirt around my back. So sometimes it's really hard to get it on and reach all the way around or reach all the way to the back or it gets kind of lost and stuck back there. So we're gonna start by putting it on one arm and again, if one arm is more difficult than the other, you're gonna to wanna to do the, the difficult side first or the side that's in pain or that you can't move as much. And I'm just gonna slide this all the way up. And so it's up on my left arm, but then I'm gonna take this. And so now if it's, if it's wrapped around, this is the inside of the shirt and I'm going to grab the, um, the sleeve, the shoulder of the right arm with this hook. So this little hook will go and hold that sleeve open. And then if I have a hard time moving my right shoulder to reach around, I can kind of keep it close to my body as I use this dressing stick to move my shirt all the way around to my right side. And now it's right here and I can grab it and slide my arm in. And then I have my open front shirt on without reaching around the back and doing all those other crazy things. So that is the multifunctional dressing stick. And then I will show you the button hook. For this one, I'm gonna get a bit closer because it's kind of hard to see all the little pieces. This helps with um, buttoning buttons. It can be really difficult for some people to manage and hold and navigate if you have numbness in your fingers or difficulty just um, pinching and grasping. And so this helps because it has a large handle that it's easier to hold on to. And what we do is this little metal piece goes through the hole and then the button goes in it and it pulls the button back through. So we'll just go here. I'm going to hold this open and I'm going to push this metal piece through my hole. And then I'm going to grab the button 
And then I'm going to move this hand back to this side and pull the button through the hole. And then I just push it off the button hook. I'll come a little closer and demonstrate one more time. So we take the hole and the button hook goes through the hole. And then it wraps around the button. And then we take the shirt and we pull it back through and then push it off. And then it's buttoned. And we can keep doing that all the way down. So also super helpful if we are in a situation where you want to navigate your buttons and, and get those all buttoned up. So the last thing I'm going to show you here are it is totally different. We've been kind of doing all these dressing things with some little tools on the side. Um, and these are, I call them traction strips. These ones aren't strips, but a lot of them are. But they are for the tub or the shower. I think it's really helpful to have some of these for the shower floor to prevent slipping. Um, it's, a, it's a huge safety thing and it's super helpful because a lot of people use like a rubber mat or the mat with the grippies or the bumpies or whatnot. But there's a couple things about that one, even though they're suctioned and they're supposed to be stable, a lot of times they're not. They will slip or move and, and be in a position we don't want them to be in or they cover up the hole in the drain and and then we have a problem there because the water doesn't drain or the biggest thing is you just have to pick it up and put it down every time you get in the shower because if you don't then it'll get all mucky and moldy and we don't want that either so these strips really helps prevent having to bend over lift up that mat put down that mat every time you get in and out of the shower so these ones are just different shapes um they, they come in three sizes. There's other ones that are little squiggly strips or straight strips um, and they, they just peel and they're like stickers. You stick them down on the bottom of your shower floor and make sure that they're sealed really nicely. Um, and then they just stay there and then it, it acts as good traction for your feet so they don't slip in the shower. So one thing that's important to think about when putting these in is to have them close enough together that your foot will touch more than one, um, there'll be gaps in between, right? Because we, we don't need like the whole floor traction, but we need your, your feet to be over them any way you step. So if you do have the strips, let's say there's two strips going this way, you wanna put it in a way that your foot goes the opposite way. If you stand this way, you don't want the strips to go like this because then you can still slip in between them, if that makes sense. So you kind of want the strips perpendicular to where your feet will be, and then that will help you stay safe in the shower, getting in and out and doing what you need to do there. So I know that was kind of a lot, um, a lot of different pieces of equipment out there. There's some really neat things um, that are really helpful and it's, it's a learning process. There's a learning curve to trying anything new. When we're used to doing something a certain way every time, it's hard to do it a different way, but these tools really can help make things smoother. I mean, that foot funnel, I got my shoe on so fast. If I tried to put my regular shoe on right now without that, it would take a long time because of the reaching and the bending that we need to do. So um, I just wanted to kind of share that there's options out there because a lot of people just don't know what's available. And these things are available for you to go check out and see if it works for you. First question, is there a specific type of store that carries these items or is Amazon the answer? So Amazon is the easiest answer. Everything I demonstrated today is from Amazon. You can also find a lot of them at drugstores or Walmart or whatnot, but they, they often don't have the variety. Um, I showed one option because these are all my favorites of each tool, um, but there's a lot of different options out there for different styles and types of something. So Amazon is definitely easiest, but but things are at Walmart or Bartels or Rite Aid or different things like that also. And you, you talk about the reacher. How do you know if somebody is using the right size reacher? And, and one of the questions is, is there an extension for that, for the reacher? That's Yeah, that's a great question. I haven't seen an extension for a reacher, okay. but I've, I've seen them typically come in 26 inches and 32 inches. I personally like the 26 inch reacher better because if someone is taller and they have further to go to the floor, they also have longer arms. So it probably won't be too bad. It really depends on what you're doing with it. If, if you're trying to 
grab something that's further away or up in a shelf or down on the ground and you can and you're just taking it from one place and putting it somewhere else a longer reacher is great but if you're trying to grab something and, and put it in your hand the 32 inch reacher you'd have to hold it all the way back here to get to the tip of the reacher so right. and same thing with your pants if you're pulling your pants up or doing you know using the reacher something close to you the 26 inch reacher is really the way to go in my opinion is there any reason why you were were you just explaining the two different types of donners for either the wire or the other socks? In other words, was there a recommended one or were you just given two examples? So those were kind of for two different types of socks. So the okay. wire one is better for compression stockings because it. it it supports it better, it holds it better, um, and it's it's longer. Using a regular sock with that type of thing. I mean, you could do it, but I think it would just be trickier. So for smaller socks, stretchy, regular socks, the, the second one I showed is, is better and easier. And the first one is more for those tight, long compression stockings. Last question, Heidi. Um, obviously, with what you do as an occupational therapist, is it recommended that before somebody goes and a family member or a caregiver purchases this type of equipment, that they speak to somebody who's a professional like you to make sure, once again, that they're not just eyeballing a you know or a 26 or a 32 inch? Yeah, it's definitely a good idea. A lot of people don't. Same thing with walkers. People go to the store and they get one and they use it and and often form bad habits with it. Um, so with this type of equipment, if, if you're able to reach out to someone or I'm around to reach out to just to be like, Hey, what is the right type? Um, I, I would recommend it. A lot of people don't, a lot of people get it. And I mean, there's instructions and, and at some like medical supply stores, they can kind of help walk you through it. If you do go to a local shop that would have these things. Um, but like if you, if you go on Amazon or or Walmart or that type of store, you know, they're, they're not gonna have the people to really show you the right way to use it or the right style or size. Um, so yes, it's recommended. I know a lot of people don't and it's hard to find people to ask those questions, but um, you can always ask to, to speak to an occupational therapist. And if you don't know how, ask your doctor, or reach out, you know, locally about, hey, how can, I, how can I talk to someone about this? And there'll be someone around to help with. Um, and there's just so, so, so much more. Um, so many tools out there, so many helpful pieces of equipment, um, the right type of bath mat, finding the right type of bed rail, um, a, a grab bar, gripper. Um, there's just so many things out there that I could talk about it for hours. <laughs> and I'm sure you don't want to be sitting here for hours <laughs> listening to all of it. Um, but it's out there. So if you have trouble with something, reach out to, to occupational therapy and say, hey, this daily task is hard as, do you know something that can help me out or um, look for different pieces of equipment. I have an ebook, it's called Tools for Independence and it has all this equipment in it and more. Um, and it talks about how to identify the differences between them. It has some videos connected to it with demonstrations on how to use the equipment. It has links on where you can buy the equipment. So if there's daily tasks that are difficult for you or for a loved one of yours um, and you wanna see what are the tools out there that can help them out, because there's so many and people just don't know that they exist or don't know they're out there. So I would um, check that out. It's called Tools for Independence. You can go to weagewithpurpose.com um, and then just click on Tools for Independence and, and see, see what's inside and see what's about it. So, um, that's what I got today. There's so many things out there and just, just use them to help you out if, if it can help. So how else can people find you? Uh, email, phone number? Yes. So on the screen, my email is Heidi at ascendtherapypnw.com. Phone number 253-900-2295. I am on social media also, Facebook and Instagram. Um, Instagram is Aging with Independence. Facebook is Ascend Therapy Services. Um, so so look for those as well. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate, please don't hesitate to reach out and just ask. Excellent. Well, thank you again, Heidi. Um, as far as knowledgeable aging, you can find us on knowledgeableaging.com. You can see all of our archive webinars. You can go to YouTube. We encourage you to subscribe. We update that as much as we can. Also, if uh, podcasts are your thing, you can find us on Apple Tunes, Spotify, et cetera.
Till next time, I'm your host, Jason Kotar. This is Knowledgeable Aging. Thank you.